Uh, don't waste your time on those junkyard losers. This country was built on genocide and slavery. We killed all the black guys that were here, and then, and then we shipped in new black guys of our own. And then we brought in Jesus like a bar of soap. Let's go. Yeah. You know it. If a mulatto don't change. A mulatto is half black, half white. That can't change. Now, once a half black, half white person... Do you know, that they, call, do you know they call Japanese people Negroes at one point in the country? Do you all know, of, do you know all, that? All I'm you, no, I'm asking you. No. You didn't brother, know that? No, I didn't oh, know okay. someone called a Japanese no, person No, no, it wasn't Negro. someone. They were classified under the classification of Negro. All right? The Indian, the East Indian, he was called the Negro. The Japanese were called the Negro. Bro, I'm not talking about what someone wrote in a sense. I'm, what I'm saying to you is that in world classification, that's what I'm saying. You know what? We're saying that we got to stop calling ourselves black. But equally, once you understand that, you got to stop calling these people white. Not just because white is, is a political status or white means purity and purity means God and God is the ruler of the earth. It's because they're not white people. Period. If it goes for us, it goes for them. Now, their nationality, they gave it up when they came over here to try to take your stuff, your land, your estate. They had to give up their nationality to become a United States of America citizen, which is an which is a corporation. Now, let, let's let's get straight with what that why that's important. If it's a corporation and you are a citizen slash member of a corporation, there's nothing for you to be but a employee slash servant of a corporation mm -hmm. there's no other there's no other nothing there to be it's no such thing as that because the whole deal was to birthright theft mm -hmm. the whole deal was where's my land that for them uh, uh the whole deal was like this is really this is really the quote unquote promised land. This is really the quote unquote heart of civilization. This is really uh, what what you might call Northwest Africa. That's what, and I say that to people so they can stop saying I'm going back to Africa and understand that they in it. This is the Garden of Eden. It's the Garden of Eden. That's what they had in Columbus's journal that they arrived absolutely. in the Garden of Eden. So what has happened is absolute lies. Milk and honey. That's right, and the land of milk and honey is another terminology. So this now these things are important because as you're doing studies and you read books, well, however old they may be or whatever like that, and if it says the land of milk and honey, you need to know they're talking about the North American continent. If you don't know that, then you know, then you miss it, and that's part of our problem. The word black means bleach. That's what it means. True. And I'm bleach like means pale. So the Europeans are actually the black men. And what they did was they switched our, our identity. They stole our identity, or actually stole our minds. So now they're saying they're proud to be Americans when American applies to the copper color, copper complexion people, which is us. Today, a more accurate depiction of the Native Americans of the United States is beginning to unfold. Y'all, we're at um, 
the Cahokia Mounds in Illinois. Um, powerful place, powerful energy. We're at one of the largest mounds here, which are basically pyramids, you know, where they found several artifacts. Artifacts where they only said we're in West Africa, you know, ancient um, relics. Uh, there are also parts in the park that I mentioned before where they're, partic they're um, able to tell uh, time, like a, basically a large sundial. They're able to predict like seasonal events um, off of certain areas. And the energy here is just really, really high. Um, and knowing that our ancestors were a part of something so, so big, you know, so ingenious is amazing. Um, basically standing on top of a pyramid. So we're gonna get us some good vibes, do some meditations and and uh, take advantage of this these vibes. Setting the record straight. Okay. Okay, setting the record straight. When you start talking about a situation of uh, was it twirling into the vine? Now if you have Trying one fourth yeah. of each part, I'm quite sure they don't have one fourth. As far as, but they still got it under law where they can get the things and grant the things that they want. Right, but that's only because, that's only because uh, prior, to, prior to the civil rights movement and affirmative action, etc., you didn't have any rights at all, right? What happened is in the 17th century, right here in Georgia, where we dwell, the international Native Americans, the Europeans came in and made a deal with us for equipment, heavy equipment, because we couldn't sell our goods because heavy equipment was starting to come, more sophisticated farming. So they made a deal with us and told us that they would give us a certain amount of heavy equipment, like they usually do, and we pay them back in six months. You, you follow? Okay. However, and you can read this, you can read up on it. However, after we did it, they didn't do, they didn't hold true to that treaty because it was a writ it was oral, not a written agreement. They came back within three weeks. And then when we couldn't afford to pay them, what they did is they took the women and the girl children from us, all right? It didn't stop there, because that's not how the UMass is built, right? And they started having children by them, all right? What happened within a year's time, the UMass were trying to hold true to their word, and when they found out that these Caucasians, these British Caucasians, were having sex with their daughters, there was a, what they call a UMass massacre here in Georgia, right, like the Zulu did, and they rose up and they started massacring Europeans and pushed them off the land. But what they had to take back into consideration is that a lot of their women had been raped by these Caucasians and that the children being born to them were mulattoes. You follow that? These mulattoes grew up, wanted to leave our campsites or what they call presently reservations. They wanted to leave the land and go and look and seek out lighter people. So when these mulatto children sought out Caucasians to marry, they produced these Caucasian-looking people who by right can say they're uh, Yamasi. You follow? You understand what happened? And then what happened is the tribe got a war broke out. We blended in with the Seminole, the Creek, the Oshito, the Wichita, and different tribes as Yamasi. We ended up inside because then all the Europeans came together against us because we whipped a couple of ass. So they got all the different tribes together, uh, all the different cults of uh, the Irish, the Polish, the French, everybody got together and came down us right here in Georgia, right here in Milledgeville. You follow? And mashed us. So the men had to, we had migrated in different directions. Those that went to Georgia, we became known as the Seminole. The far one, ones who are going, so the others of us went as far as Chile became, as, uh, as far as the Yucatan. We scattered in different directions, and we became mixed in with the Cherokee, so you find a lot of your masses saying, I'm a Cherokee. And you say, how do you know? Because my grandmother is a Cherokee. And it goes back further than your grandmother. What about your great-great-grandmother? What tribe was she? Because the Cherokees was not always there. So they were called an they were called an Annie Indiga, which meant we the people. And all the tribes started naming themselves, like I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, we the people because that was the first line of the Iroquois Constitution. So when the Constitution was set up here as a remembrance of who they are, most of the Native Americans in their own dialect named their, the tribe, we the people. 
as a group, because we all had to unite to survive. And so we broke off and became different tribes. So yes, you have Caucasians that can stand up and say, I am your master. As long as you don't stand up and say, right, he's your master, he's my son. You follow that? And you couldn't do that until certain bills where guys like Dr. Martin Luther King, who didn't appear to have any value, had a great amount of value insofar as he got certain rights implemented that gave us the right to stand up in a courtroom. Whereas, let's say, the Nation of Islam ain't giving us no rights. But we're doing this as a nation, we're going to talk about what we're going to do to the white man. Dr. Martin Luther King, you know what I'm saying, went out and got certain things passed that gave us the right to get into the courts, uh, to get into the, uh, what do you call it, into the universities, so we can get the kind of the degrees, so we can do the kind of investigation that is necessary for us to make uh, claims. And it's not about, it's not about reclamation of land. You don't, you don't, you don't, the law literally says don't say reclamation of land. I mean, you, don't, you just got to be on the land. No, I don't have to reclaim my land, I have to be on the land and then tell them from the land, this is mine. Family, my family's from Jamaica. But let me ask or you a question of, before you go on. Or the island of Esamica, or Esamica. Mm -hmm. The Caribs, the Saboni, the Arawaks, in their oral and written documentation, they said that they're from North, Central, and South America. And from there, they've always been there. They're not detaching themselves from our cousins, nephews, aunts, uncles, whatever we want to call them in Africa or in Asia or in Australia and nobody's talking about Antarctica. Mm -hmm. So we go back millions and billions of years. But what happens that the, um, the Moors in the Caribbean was called West Indian, which means Western dark people. They were also called Maroons. Mm -hmm. So the thing that the brother Nubu Ali brought forth was that the Moors are from Northwestern and Southwestern Africa. He means North America, Central and South America and also Africa. We have a residue that we can go to and find it. We've been here for a very long time. However, the beauty of Egypt is that we can go there to see these things. However, these examples of law and deity and personifications of laws is all over the planet. Now before I break this down or even break this picture down, take the letter A for example, right? The letter A is the shape of a pyramid. Now, there's a reason why there's America, Africa, Asia, Antarctica, Australia. All these continents start with the letter A for a reason, to show you that we, the pyramid builders, the ones of light, more M-U-U-R, were global and was everywhere. So one of the places you can find this is in the east, in one of our great continents called Africa. Just 70 miles south of Birmingham, Alabama lies Moundville Archaeological Park. Moundville was a major center before European contact. The lifestyle mannequins pictured here are the forebears of the indigenous people who live there to this very day. I contacted the museum and asked how long had these mannequins been part of the exhibit. I was informed that they had been there since the early 70s. In 2010, the museum received a facelift, and now these are the new residents of Moundville. These people are replacing the indigenous people. This is further proof, as many have speculated in the past, that the black Negro American is being Africanized off of his ancestral homeland. So now when you visit the museum, you get this instead of this. Kind of like going from this to that. In his book, Confederate Currency, The Color of Money, the author John Jones showed how the black Negro Americans were used on the money in the southern states. Question, would Europeans drag people from halfway around the world, then put them on their currency? Of course not. They were trying to get the indigenous people to use money because they have never used it before. So adding them on the money made the Amerindians think that they were becoming part of a European economic system when in reality it was used to steal their earth. It is important to keep in mind that at this time the Europeans thought that the world was flat, but when they got to the Americas that notion was immediately discarded. We all know that very bright talents may be lodged under a very dark skin. William Byrd, 1728. William Byrd was a tobacco planter in Virginia. When he talks about dark skin who was he alluding to? 
Well, let's take a look. This photo shows how an original work can be transformed throughout the years. The first female is the prototype of the so-called African-American female. The second image shows you the same drawing, but major changes have occurred. Her hair is different. Her skin is a little lighter. Her features different. Her clothes are different. The third drawing is a 180 degree shift from the first two. It is here where the African-American history begins. First, the image is looking away from what the first two images are looking at. Second, the third female looks like she's not even from America. She looks like she can be from almost anywhere, India, Asia, Middle East, etc. Although, though she is a copy of the first two females, the third image has pearls on her neck. Pearls are not the preeminent jewelry among North American Amerindian females. They have many a choices, mainly cloth, silver, gold, turquoise, obsidian, animal teeth, and a host of other minerals that the earth produced. This female is from the continent of Africa. When you compare her to the indigenous American females, right away you can see the differences. The African female is of a brown hue, obviously because she lives on the equator where the sun feels like it's in your lap. Also, most of Africa is desert and plains. They live in a completely different environment than the people of North America. This late 1700s drawing of the reconciliation between Britannia and her daughter America should pose some serious questions. How did America get to become Britain's daughter if America was here before Britain even knew she existed? Why is America surrounded by English, Spanish, French, and Portuguese men? Where are the American males? Why is the female depicted as America running into the arms of Britannia? And is the woman depicted as America, is she from Africa? These images are entitled Emblem of America and were published in the late 1700s. Who are the children in these images? Who are the people going into the waterfall behind them? Are we to believe that these children came to America on so-called slave ships? Do they look like slaves? This photo is entitled, An Indian Warrior Entering a Wigwam with a Scout, taken from a series of letters by an officer traveling through the interior part of America. Doesn't he look like someone we all know? This drawing is signed by the author in 1695 and is called Ancestral Tablets. This drawing is from the New England part of America, around Boston. Question, are these people slaves? This drawing is from the book Biography and History of the Indians of North America by Samuel Drake. This book was published in 1834. Again, does this man look like he just got off of a slave ship? And if he did, where is he from? Is he black? Is he a Christian? Is he a Democrat? No, these are the identities that the Amerindians accepted when they became U.S. property. This is the drawing I found online. The book that it came from was written in a language I didn't understand. But notice the word above the drawing says Florida. All of the other males in the photo are dressed just like the male on the stage. Are these the indigenous people of Florida? Another Florida drawing. I would like to point out that when you search these images online, you'll find other images that are complete replicas of these. The ethnic identity of the people are always changing, just like at the Moundville Museum. This drawing is of the Caribbean. When we talk about the Arawak or Carib Indians, this is who they are. They didn't die out. They just had their identities altered. This is an early map of Paraguay in South America. Notice the indigenous people being depicted here. Notice the animals that they are with. Are those the same animals that one would find on the continent of Africa? The reason I'm showing you North America, South America, the Caribbean, and now Mexico is to show you how the empire was wiped out. The Anastasi race are the indigenous people of America. America is the landmass, and the people were the Anastasi. It didn't become divided until the colonizers came and started giving out their names, and we accepted them. So now instead of being Anastasi, we are black, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Jamaican, Moor, Christian, Guatemalan, and whatever else name they decide to give us. That's why the borders were put up. America has been carved into almost a hundred different nations and states. 
This is a main obstacle to unity. These pictures are from Mexico. But what was it before it was called Mexico? The Spanish came in and claimed it theirs and named it Mexico. But who were the indigenous Mexican? And what was their relationship to the indigenous people of North America? Or were they the same people? This is an indigenous female from Arizona. Notice the facial similarities she shares with the Aztec female from Mexico. Could these females be of the same bloodline? Indigenous males in Arizona. Notice the shelter in the background. Could the males living in the cities today go out in nature and build them a shelter to protect them from the elements? These last drawings are off the coast of California. Do these people look like they've ever been in captivity? Are we to believe that these people were kidnapped from somewhere in Africa and brought all the way to California? I hope this presentation has given you enough information to spark you to do oversimplification. Mm -hmm. Oversimplification is where people take what's called philosophically micro history mm -hmm. and take bits and pieces of the story and then they begin to weave it. And this is what we're victims of. We're victims of one story. We're victims of one story where some Africans got escorted to a ship and brought over here and now we don't have no ship records. They got records for everything. They even got the, 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 the Santa Maria, the Pina, all that sucker shit Columbia's was yeah. supposed to get on. They got all of them intact. They don't got no slave ships. The log records. They don't got no logs or none of that. It's mm -hmm. a farce.